Everybody is talking about the major changes in macOS Sequoia. Like the Apple Intelligence, iPhone mirroring, passwords app, other integrations between calendar and reminders, and other features. I will of course get to all of this in the upcoming videos. But in this one, I want to go a little bit against the tide and show you some of the hidden features which Apple was not really mentioning. But at the end, these features might be even more useful. I will start with one of my favorite features. So open system settings, go to desktop and dock tab and here under double click on the window title bar, you have a new option. It used to be only minimize and zoom. Now we also have fill. What this means is that if I double tap the top of this window, it will basically maximize it to the size of a whole screen. It's very useful. I had to be doing this manually every single day. A little bit on the similar note is one of the headlining features of macOS Sequoia, which is the window tiling. It has been on the Windows computer since the medieval ages, but now we can finally do that on the Mac as well. How we do it? Just simply grab the window and drag it to the side of the screen and it will kind of snap on in it. It will always snap into these outlined parts of the screen. So if you go more in the corner, it will make the video smaller and this way you can fit up to four different windows on one screen. Sometimes it feels a little bit clumsy, so if you want to make it more precise, you can hold the option key, which will be showing you the outlines all the time. So this way you can snap it a little bit better. There is just one thing you really need to change regarding this feature. So go to desktop and dock in system settings and scroll until you get under window section. Here we can find three different options for the window tiling. And I recommend turning off the margins. I believe you want to take a full advantage of your entire display. There is no point losing the space of the screen by these margins. Window tiling can be very useful or very annoying feature. We will go into every detail of it in the next video. So if you want to check it out with me, I recommend you to subscribe. But now let's move on in this video because I want to show you a few useful security options. First, very hidden but quite important security feature is rapid response. So go into general settings. Well, now if you are opening the system settings on macOS Sequoia, you can notice that it's actually opening on the general tab by default instead of the appearance tab which was there before. And there are some other changes, quite a few pages are redesigned or reorganized. But now go to software update, then click on this info icon next to automatic updates and right here enable install security responses and system files. Once you activate this, macOS can install security updates on the background, even without requiring to restart the system, which helps protect you from some potential new security threats. This feature was originally released already in macOS Ventura, but not many people know about it. But what is really new in macOS Sequoia is rotating Wi-Fi address feature. So let's activate it. Go to Wi-Fi settings, that's where you can find it. Click on the details next to your connected Wi-Fi and under private Wi-Fi address, select the new rotating option. Once you activate this, your Wi-Fi address will from time to time change, which reduces the chance of your Wi-Fi address being tracked. And that's really an easy way how to protect your privacy. There are many other settings related to privacy and security, which I want to summarize in the next video. If it's already released, it will pop up here on top or you will get notified about it once you hit the bell icon after subscribing. As I have mentioned in the beginning of this video, one of the most useful apps in macOS Sequoia is the new password app. Yet its most useful feature is actually turned off by default. It's great to have all the information in one place, but what is even better is that I can easily access all of that from the menu bar. So I can get all my passwords and authentication codes within one click. But we have to set it up first in the app. So let's open it up. Go to the app settings. And here, click on show passwords in the menu bar. Are you also annoyed by all of the ads and pop-up banners on the web pages? There is one new amazing tool in Safari, which can help you hide any element on the page. I need to select it here from the address bar. And now I am in the full control and every click 
will make any section of the website to disappear. And it will stay hidden even after refreshing the page. Time to say goodbye to all the weird ads. Of course, every new macOS version always brings along a new wallpaper. Usually there are two wallpapers, like here the classic Sequoia animation. And then the Sequoia Forest. Everyone is quite excited about the retro Macintosh wallpaper, with some classic icons. I am probably not that old yet to remember when this was an actual view on the Macintosh computers. But when you put it in this grey dark color, it looks quite cool. But what I have quite fallen in love is the Sequoia Forest. What I haven't figured out until recently is the fact that Apple actually include not just this one, but also the Sequoia Forest in the morning, which looks quite cool, and also the same at night. And even the animation is a little bit different, so go ahead and check it out, I think it's quite beautiful. There is also one design change to a classic Mac Chess. I call it Chess version 2.0. The chess application has a new graphics after years of having the same. It looked like this before, so I think it's quite a nice and unexpected update. Despite the fact I don't really play it on the Mac too much. But if you are really into serious gaming, there are quite a lot of new games coming to Mac from a major game developers. Which are now taking the full advantage of Metal Freed and Apple Silicon, so the Mac is becoming quite a machine for gaming. Are you also using headphones while being on the Mac? Me, basically 99% of the time. Not just because I want to remove myself from the distractions from the surrounding, but also I don't want to bother anyone with the content playing from the Mac. Also while making these videos, I have to pay attention to all the audio details. And there is one more small feature which can help me with that. So go to accessibility. Scroll down to audio and then down to headphone accommodations. There is a new custom audio setup button. With this you can perform a simple hearing test and based on your hearing profile it can boost some frequencies that your ear might have lost and it can correct some other sound problems. With that the audio coming from the headphones will be perfectly balanced and it's especially useful if you have any hearing problems. Now when our headphones works perfectly we can set up one new feature, called Vocal Shortcuts. It's a great feature in iOS 18, but we can take advantage of it even on the Mac. You can find it in the Accessibility settings. Here just click on Setup. It can be set to a few predefined accessibility options, but when it gets really useful is that you can connect it with the Shortcuts app. These are all of my created shortcuts from the Shortcuts app. By the way, you can find tutorials on each one of them on the channel. So if anything catches your eye, you can easily find it. But now let me show you how it works. I will select one of the options. I actually often type on the web or trying to create some catchy YouTube titles and I need to fit within a specific number of characters. So I will set it for this shortcut, which will count me all of the characters of the selected text. So let's proceed. Here it will ask you to select the phrase and repeat it three times. I'll say count, count, count. Now it's all ready and when I say this command, count, I get this multi-step process completed within just one single phrase. And one last phrase I can say right now is to recommend you clicking on the subscribe button because I have a lot of new videos about macOS Sequoia coming real soon. So I hope to see you there.